baby, when Freddie said no, okay, I don't think y'all understand. When Freddie said no, girl, I was like, what? Lock and drop it. Uh, lock and drop it. Lock and drop it. Girl, the praise that came for, which forth my belly, girl, there's a praise on the inside that I can't keep to myself. Hey, to that thing, girl. Mommy make it roll. Shoot. Girl, pop my kids. Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Belle and this is the Belle Perspective and we are here today to talk about Love is Blind. Girl, these are the final chapters, girl. We're gonna mash up eight and nine and the season finales. Are y'all ready? Girl, let's get into it, okay? So we're gonna start off couple by couple, girl. Let's jump into Bobby and Jasmine, all right? Bobby and Jasmine. So we're at the altar. Bobby and Jasmine both agreed to say I do. Yay for them. Okay, throw the rice. Good for them. That's wonderful, wonderful. But I do have a couple things that I want to talk about, okay? Now, Jasmine's mama, okay? Jasmine's mama is very much intense and very much nosy and all in their business. Now, here's the thing, Jasmine. Your mama don't need to be in all, all up in your business like that, but also... Girl, that question about that job, girl, it's on my notes too, girl. What exactly does Bobby do for a living girl? And is it going to get, is it going to be enough to get y'all through? Okay. Now here's my thing. When he said he was a buyer for a cruise line, I said, now, wait a minute now. Okay. Now I'm sure it's a wonderful job. I'm sure it pays the bills and things like that. But girl, is that going to be one of the first jobs that get laid off when the layoffs happen? Cause that's the things I'd be thinking about. You know what I mean? Like if you, if your man had a job as an accountant, that's probably going to be one of those last jobs that get laid off. Girl, his job. Sound like they just made that up, girl. I don't know. I I don't. I'm not. Again, no. I'm not. No. I'm be employed. Okay, that's not my problem. My thing is, girl. When layoffs happen, if layoffs are happen, is your position gonna be one of the first ones that get cut? It's my only concern. Okay. So again, Jasmine, I'm not agreeing with your mama, but I'm saying you might want to look more into what she's talking about because she's been on the turf far longer than you have. All right. That's all I'm going to say, good sis. And the other thing about Jasmine and Bobby, was Bobby's parents anywhere around there? I don't know if I saw Bobby's mama. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I did start skipping through some of this stuff. Because, girl, them weddings was, girl, I love you, and I love you, and I love it. I've been the happiest I've been in my life. I'm like, okay, girl, I, 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 I wrap this up. This up. Is you, do you do or do you don't? That, that's all I really want to know. Do you do or do you don't? All right? So I was kind of, get, get, get to the money with this, all right? Another thing about Jasmine I wanted to point out real quick, right quick, like, okay, so as they were having their hen parties, I was like, a hen party? Now, that's funny as hell. I'm going to call it that. Next time, one of my good girlfriends, who actually is getting married in September next month, I'm going to call her shit a hen party, okay? Anyway, so while they were at the hen party, Jasmine decides to call Bobby, right? Now, she thought she was slick. I knew what the, I knew what the hell Jasmine was doing. Jasmine was calling to try to see if there was any strippers down there that the people had for their little stag party, which is another thing. Stag, I ain't never heard of that before in my whole life. Their bachelor and bachelorette party, they call it hen and stag, I guess, child. Moving on, all right? She thought she was slick. Mama, I knew what you was up to. You was calling to make sure there wasn't no butt naked holes down there to that strip club, down there to wherever they was, wherever they was at, okay? That's what... That's what you was doing, Jasmine. I saw that. She was like, mm, what you doing? You thinking about me? What y'all over there doing? I don't hear nothing in the background, girl. What's going on? I heard that. I know what, I know what. Mama, Jasmine, you ain't slick, mama. Jasmine is very insecure. She might want to rope that up pretty soon, get some healing because, girl, if we hear any more stories about her hunting Bobby's profile down from damn 2010, girl, I don't want to hear shit else about that, girl. I really don't. Good luck. All right, we're moving on. Steven and Sabrina Child, what? Nothing going on about them, girl. They just about as dry as sandpaper, girl, which is wonderful because everybody don't need to be going back and forth and forth and back in this shit. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, Steven and Sabrina said, I do. Both of them agreed. That's lovely for them. Congratulations. Throw the rice, throw the rice, throw the rice. Where's the cake? Where are the drinks? Are we playing juvenile back that ass up? Okay, come on. Let's get on to the dance floor. All right. The only thing. Things. The only two things I wanted to point out real quick is girls did not, did did not your heart and or your coochie <laughs> jump for joy when you saw Steven in that damn cream suit, baby. It was a whole lot of jumping, baby. My heart and other parts was jumping. <laughs> baby, I love you. Okay. I don't know. He watching and be like, girl, what the hell you be over here saying? I love you, boo. Anyway. I'm focusing, all right, baby. That cream, shout out to that cream suit that Steven had on, girl. Hello, and all them curls, baby. I'm telling you, is Steven part? Do he got a little bit of Africana up in him, girl? That, that hair, 
it's that hair. It's it's real that curl pattern, girl. It's giving very much 4A. Okay. <laughs> 3C. Okay. It's, it's getting close to that. Okay. Anyway, another thing is parents. I ain't gonna talk bad about his mama. But girl, was she two to three sheets to the wind when she walked in that door? I was like, girl, how much rum did you have before the wedding, mama? I mean, she may not have had. I don't know. But she definitely, his parents did not look like how I thought his parents was going to look. The way he looked and the way his parents looked, two and three different things, girl. Two and three <laughs> different things, okay? And I, I mean that with all due respect, all right? Tom and Maria, girl. Let me tell you something. The way that I realized in my adult life that rejection really is sometimes protection. And here's the thing. I think Tom is a bad guy, but I do believe that Tom plays too much all the time. Okay. I will tell you from the mixer where all the pod crew, the pod squad got to meet everybody. Tom sat his white picket fence teeth looking at not even white girl off white picket fence teeth down to that bar okay and told tash that she wasn't sure if she was gonna marry uh maria okay basically and, and tash was giving him as we lay energy okay i know you belong to somebody else but i you know i we, i can sleep I, I can fit you in on the weekend okay giving very much weekend by scissor okay she was giving him that type of energy. I knew right there. I said, uh uh, Tom, um, Tom no, nah, I'm gonna tell these people you're not interested in Maria like that. The other thought is Maria was the person that Tom chose because he thought Tash was ugly. Let's be for real. He said, Oh, girl, I thought you was gonna be nerdy. That's cold for ugly. Okay. That's cold for unattractive. All right. He was like, I thought you were gonna be more nerdier than this. I didn't think you were gonna look like this. Right. So you chose Maria. Okay. Because you thought Maria was going to be much more attractive than Tosh was, okay? And not ignoring the fact that Maria's, you and Maria's values didn't line up from jump. When she said she wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, she's trying to be a kept woman, okay? She's trying to be a woman of leisure, all right? Your ass should have known right there. This is not work. This is not going to work for us, okay? But no, you was leading with your peen and not with your head, Mr. Corporate, okay? child the other thing girl listen his mama was not trying to be down to that damn wedding i said if your mama not trying to be here she and it was a couple people's parents it was a couple people's parents that were not present and i said oh that's a red flag that is a red flag okay girl so tom ultimately said no at the altar girl prior to the wedding his mama not his mama maria's mama pulled up on Tom, gave him such words of encouragement, told him to call her mom. When I tell you that lady is so gracious and so sweet and so beautiful and just so, oh my gosh, like, ma'am, do you want to adopt any additional children? Because I would gladly be accepted in your family. Okay. That lady looked mortified. The Tom told her no. The Tom told Maria no in front of everybody on God's green earth. No. And then later on, getting in the car in the one on one, talking about our ultimate, ultimately, our values didn't align. Girl, why the hell you ain't say that shit? Girl, the way I would have beat the brakes off of him down to that altar, girl, the jaws of life to get me in his. I ain't gonna say nothing. I'm gonna keep on going. I'm gonna be quiet. But it would have taken the jaws of life, taken the jaws of life to, to, to loosen. To loosen my hands up off of his ass. Do you hear what I am saying to you? Because, boy, you didn't have to have me come all the way down here with this makeup on, okay? I done put my good, my good spanks on, okay? I done put on this dress here. I done put my hair back, baby. I done got up. I, I ain't hardly slept and wink, nigga. And you got me down here. Baby, take the jaws of life to keep me from loosening my hands up off your ass. That's all I know, okay? We're moving on to Demi and Ollie. You know what? The situation with Demi and Ollie here's the thing i think it was some projection happening with us okay ladies let's be for real i think we were looking at demi and we were projecting i think we were looking at ali and i think we were projecting now while i also know that i don't trust ali worth a damn and i don't and i still don't and i'm very proud of demi because she said i don't she walked away at the altar praise the lord because something in my in my spirit wasn't right about ali but i also feel the way that they got to the altar was very much Y'all check y'all traumas at the door. Okay. I'm not, I'm not saying that you didn't have the right sense to side eye Ollie, but I'm being honest. Uh, I feel like we was laying it on. 
I really do. Anyway, they at the mixer. The only thing that I picked. This is uh, episodes eight and nine. Only thing that I picked up at the mixer that made me think, nah, Ali is not for real, is when Charlotte came. Child, Charlotte was over there breaking up homes before she could even say anything. I said, oh, girl, I know that's great. Now, Charlotte is absolutely gorgeous, girl. Okay, she was breaking up two and three homes, girl. Oh, God, okay. Good for you, Charlotte. But when Ali said, ooh, Charlotte is maddening and all these different things, he was like, yeah, Demi, yeah, Demi fire too. I was like, nah. Yeah, nah, brother. That that's when I knew that it wasn't it wasn't there. And I'm glad that Demi went with her heart because I think ultimately Demi was like, we went three days and he didn't reach out to me. He didn't say anything. Ollie's mama wasn't nowhere to be found. It's like, where is your mama, boy? His daddy was there. But quite as his cat, I mean, was that really his daddy and not his uncle or his step older brother or something? Like, where is your parents? This is one of the biggest days of your life, and your mama nowhere around. Mm, I don't know about that. I just didn't trust Ali. I'm not even going to hold you. I just didn't trust him. He gives immature. Now, I will say I like the way he handled it because Demi was like, nah, I ain't going to better do this. Now, both of them kept saying, this isn't the end of Demi and Ali. But, I mean, how do you come back from this? Some they dump, Somebody dumps you in front of, in 4K, in front of everybody and their cousin's cat. Okay, girl? And you talking about, nah, this is not the end of us. No, baby, this absolutely is the end of us. We're done. This is over. We're finished, all right? <laughs> nothing else. No, let's wrap this up, folks. I don't want to have nothing else to do with this, okay? But that's me personally, okay? That's just me personally. Now, yeah, just I didn't trust Ali. I'm happy for Demi. I'm glad she went with her gut. I know he was embarrassed as hell, but I do like the way he handled it. Like the way he addressed the group, the crowd, and all that. But, girl. But she did right. She did right. Girl, actually, we're we gonna save Cat and Freddie for, for last. All right, let's get to uh, Benny Hanna. Well, it's Benny Hanna. All right, Benny Hanna, Benny Hanna, and Nicole. They both agreed to say I do down to the altar. There was a little pause there. Nicole was giving Benny Hanna the stare, or maybe that was editing. I don't know. Y'all, okay, I'm happy for Benny Hanna, but that Nicole girl. Nicole, girl, I still got my good eye on you, child, and I don't know if I too much care for you, girl, because, girl, back to episodes eight and nine. All right, now, Sam sauntered his ass up in that damn pub or whatever they call it down there, okay, and told Benny Hanna that you, Nicole, was trying to put that good puss on him, and he ain't want it, okay? Now, I believe the only reason why Sam turned down the puss is because he, I ain't gonna go there. We, we I'm gonna be quiet, but, you know. Him and Kat are the same person. I believe both him and Kat have that same complex about people that are darker skinned with melanin, if y'all know what I mean, okay? I believe they both suffer from that same mental illness, okay? Y'all know where I'm going with that. Anywho, all right? Now, Sam done went down to that damn lounge and told Benny Hanna that Nicole was trying to put that good puss on him and he decided to turn it down. Now, here's the thing. He also went to Nicole and asked her, is this the reason why you didn't want to marry me? And I said, Sam, the way that this is such a raggedy bull, this is the, when I tell you this is a bullshit ass move, you was a bullshit ass man for doing this bullshit. Okay. It's that, it's that passive aggressive. I'm going to put your business out there, but I'm going to make it seem like I have valor. Boy, when I tell y'all to beat the brakes off his ass in that moment too, bitch, be putting my motherfucking business out there, nigga. What the fuck wrong with you? That's why that would have been me. Nicole never denied it though. Okay. So the fact that Nicole was trying to put the puss on Sam, but was trying to act like she taking it slow with Benny Hanna. Okay, she want to take it slow before we had a physical connection. I want to do this, this, and this, and this, and this before we do all that, and that, and that, and that, and that. I'm like, Nicole, girl, sure. Got my good eye on you. I don't trust you. I don't think you're right, but it ain't my business. And y'all already said I do, so good luck. Throw the rice, throw the rice, throw the rice. Moving on, all right? Baby, when I tell you and Freddie said no to that bitch, I said... <laughs> Baby, okay, hello. I may not be a Christian no more, but girl, I know I don't maybe get the shouting up in here. I may not be Christian no more, but baby, I still know how to shout. All right, baby, Freddie, yes, God. When I tell you, Big Sus came through, Big Sus been coming through with the wisdom. Eh, 
Oh, that's what you do, girl. Okay, let me get to my notes real quick. So I don't miss nothing, girl. But Freddie said, hell nah, bitch, go away. Okay. Now here's the thing. I have a quick bone to pick with Catherine. Catherine raggedy alley cat ass. Okay. This heifer down to the lounge when they met with the, the pod people, the other pod squad. This heifer went up to go flirt with Sam. I done told y'all from my last of other reviews that Sam and Catherine are the same people and I can totally see Catherine dating a guy like Sam. Was I was did I lie? lie. Did I lie? Did I fucking lie? Did I lie? Okay. One, two. So Catherine getting all up in her feelings because Freddie done said that Charlotte is pretty. He said it twice, but we forgetting the fact, I guess she's got selective amnesia, that she also said that Sam looked like her ex-boyfriend. Now, what the fuck do you think that means? Put two and two together. You think Sam is attractive because obviously your ex looked like him, right? She get pissed off. She go over there to start flirting with Sam. Girl, when I tell you, it would have took the jaws of life to keep me from whooping her ass. Oh, girl, no, ma'am. <laughs> Bitch, I was like, oh, no, ma'am. Girl, I was going, going off on the screen girl okay she get to flirting and giggling and carrying on and all this other stuff and word on the curve girl we gonna see that the reunions that they was actually dating child but it makes sense because they the perfect person people for each other they fucked up okay all right so got the nerve to tell sam you know catch me around i'll be in london whatever y'all you know pull up on me or whatever all right she sees the the ring that nicole gave back to sam because when he originally proposed to nicole she looked at the ring to myself i'd rather have the ring you try to give nicole than the one that pretty gave me yes i have been there bitch when i tell you girl I, ooh, if i could have jumped through that television screen and ripped all her damn hair out of your head girl i know you fucking lying to me i know you ain't girl don't make me come over to grab. I knock all your goddamn teeth out your mouth, bitch. I do not like that hoe. I do not like Catherine worth a damn. Do you hear me? I do not like her. Period. All right. Anyway. Okay. So all this being said, Catherine is going to tell us the reason why she could up and act a donkey is because she's adopted. Went back and I watched the episode where she was telling her parents, talking to her parents and introducing her parents to Freddie. Girl, that heifer got adopted at 11 weeks. Okay. Because when Freddie had proposed the whole prenuptial agreement with her, she was like, you know, I heard you. The reason you, you know, you have doubts and all this stuff and stuff about me because I'm, you know, snippy and all this other stuff. But the reason why I'm snippy is because I had to protect myself and, you know, do all this other stuff, you know, because I was adopted. I was like, oh, okay. So she must have got adopted at like eight, nine, 10 years old, bitch. She was a newborn. She been with her family since damn near birth. Talking about something she had to fight for her right down to the adoption agency. Bitch, she was 11 weeks when your parents adopted you. Girl, shut your ass up, girl. You just use an adoption as an excuse to be a raggedy ass bitch. I really don't. I, girl, please. Now, I'm not trying. I'm not adopted, so I don't know the struggles. And I can imagine the type of emotional withdrawal and trauma that you experienced. But girl, please. Girl, 11 weeks. Tell something you had to fight for yourself and fend for yourself because you was adopted. Girl, get the fuck out of here. Get away from me with this. Okay? Girl, please. All right, now. What else was going on, child? Yeah, Freddie wanted a prenup, girl. She went back to her little dumbass friends, girl, dumb as she is, child. They were telling her, oh, girl, you, so that means you're not going to get anything. The bitch just told you she didn't even read the fucking prenup. She hasn't even read it. So she don't even know what the fuck it says. And a prenup is a contract that you can actually negotiate. She said, oh, your friend's stupid as you. Oh, your friends is just as stupid as you. Okay, I see why y'all friends. I get it. I get it. And Freddie was so caught up with the fact that she leaves this glamorous lifestyle. You know, she does all these fancy things. I said, yeah, you can afford to fly around the globe when you live with your goddamn parents. The bitch ain't got no place. She live with her parents, okay? How is we... And I'm not shaming people that live with their parents. I'm not shaming. Not at all. What I'm saying is how the hell she's supposed to be living this bougie lifestyle and carrying on when she live with her mama and daddy, girl. Yes, you can afford to pop bottles and and and, and go, go make it rain in the damn club when your ass ain't got no mortgage. Okay, we move. Let me move on. Let me move on because you know what I'm going <laughs> to. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, so we get to the wedding. This one, Freddie was like, you know, I try, but I can't. Bye, bitch, all right? She raw rolled off. She was like, I'm so embarrassed. I said, yeah, heifer, you should be embarrassed. You should be embarrassed by the way you acted. She basically was like, I'm not going to meet Freddie down to the altar unless I know for sure he's going to marry me, right? And I ain't even going to hold you. Freddie smooth, did it so smooth, girl. Bought her some earrings and everything. She was wearing the earrings. She thought he was going to say, yeah, for real. I said, oh, girl, that's a parting gift, girl. Bye. 
had the nerve to yank them earrings off. I said, nah, girl, don't be dumb. Keep them earrings. Nah, I know your mama raised you better than that. Okay? I know your mama raised you better than that. But Freddie, the ever beautiful gentleman, still went to go meet with her to talk to her and say, I love you. This isn't the end. He went and talked to her parents and said, you know, I really care about her. I love her. I don't want this to be the end. I just, I'm not ready to get married. Girl, when I tell you Freddie is an upstanding brother, man, girl, cat, you don't deserve him, girl. Who you deserve is Sam's raggedy, trifling, tied, dusty ass. And I hope y'all are together, girl, because that's who that's exactly who you belong with. All right. That's exactly who you belong with. And Freddie Quiet is this kept. I hope you get with Charlotte. Because Ali don't belong with Charlotte. So Ali don't belong with nobody. Child. He belongs to the streets. Okay. I'ma just be honest with you. I, I believe Ali is for them streets. Okay. Anywho, girl. Those are my final thoughts, girl. The reunion is about to be on Monday. We coming back, girl. You know I got to talk about that, child. You know I got to, you know I gotta talk about the reunion, girl. Anyway. Those are my thoughts. Y'all let me know. Let me make sure I didn't miss nothing. Those are all child. my thoughts. Y'all get in the comments. Let me know what you think about the episodes. I love this love show. Blind, Shout out to Tammy. Nothing. You love is blind. UK owes me nothing. It was gorgeous all the way, girl. They was getting married in castles, girl. Castles. Oh, baby. Love is blind. UK owes me nothing. I love all of it. Casting was perfect. No notes. Period. No notes. This was what Ready to Love from Own was supposed to be, girl girl please anyway subscribe to the channel like the video get in the comments sound off let me know what you think about the episodes see you guys in the next one take care usually i don't do this often but since recruiting is an option due to unusual rain and thunder baby i wonder